Welcome to our fifth video in our little canyon course set or little course about canyon rope systems. And this is definitely not the first video you should be watching in this course. In the description, it'll have the blog which has it all in order. A lot of these things are not just exclusive to canyoning. I found them quite interesting and useful as a climber, a big wall climber, even a highliner in how we release stuff and how we lower. This video is gonna be focused on the double rope system as opposed to the single or the twin ropes that we did in the past where we would have isolated or compound where you can release and isolate and move things around and all of that. This is something I'm more familiar with as a climber. This is going to be literally what I'm used to. The two ends of the rope are going to touch, well, hopefully touch the ground. <laughs> in canyoning, do you want both of these uh, to be equal length so you can get off? Or do you want one to be longer than the other so you can pull it through as you're swimming away? Yeah, so I would not, and this is exactly where you should avoid this system, not be using this in an aquatic canyon whatsoever. Gotcha. This should be like Southwest climbing or canyoning, a lot of climbers use. The, if, if you're using a rope bag, you gotta think, how much of this rope do I wanna restuff? So maybe yeah, I just yeah. pull the end out and I put the rope down, I can see it, it's down, I drop the bag, it spins out, or I carry the bag with me as I rappel down. Um, but it's so, like, there's no sense if I only need to rappel 20 feet and I got 200 feet of rope, so in, just throw it all out there. In climbing, I'm, I'm on the rock till I get down. Yeah. In canyon, you just go down 20 feet and go somewhere and then down another 40 and down right. somewhere. So you don't want to pull rope out every single time. Right, I don't need to. So this is, uh, as you keep saying, your least favorite system for your context, but in order to give a comprehensive yep. lowering systems rope course set, we're gonna include this video. Yeah, and it's also not uncommon. Um, I, I do use this a lot, but it's usually secondary, meaning there was a system that I rigged and then in order you to get clean it, it up into this. clean it, and this is what I end up, and you'll we'll say it's like, oh, just repel double. This is exactly what we mean. As a climber, I would take both these strands and I would put this in this super shiny ATC you definitely haven't used. I've used that. As a demonstration. Look at the dents in it. Okay. And then I would repel this. Correct. You don't have an ATC in the canyon. You nope. use your eights or your yes. Totems yep. or your palico palicoas. Palicoa pivot, yep. Um, there's a lot of these. It's just a modified eight, and it's a modified eight so I can add friction to it. This, once you once you set it up and start repelling, there's you can't get any more out of it unless you do some weird stuff with a redirect and whatnot. Um, and that's exactly yeah. why we use these. Is I want friction on the fly. This is great for the diameters I use, but some of the dental floss he uses is, uh, what diameter is this? This is eight. eight. And this is slippery. I have found ways to do eights with this. Um, but yeah, as soon as you start going even thinner, because you do that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's out this for debate. This won't do any good for you. No. This is even pretty fast with an eight. So I'm just gonna load both these up in my device. Okay. Now here's one of the things that you gotta be concerned with. What's the significant difference between repelling on an eight with a double strand in a device like this. You see this little piece of metal in between yeah. there? So that keeps the two strands separate. What I gotta be careful of when I'm, when you're repelling is sometimes twists will happen in the rope, right? It happens. And if I keep moving, so that twist actually is passing through the device. Yeah. And now there's a twist in the rope here. Okay. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but as you keep going, the more twists that I introduce into this, if this has a bunch of twists in it. It's gonna I, be a real joy pulling it down. It's gonna be very difficult. And it's not uncommon that this will get pinched up on a rock and then this does, is not retrievable. <laughs> so it's something. It's, or, or ascendable. Or ascendable, right? <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah. for a little while. Well, actually I have ascended, or my buddy has ascended on a stuck rope like that. Yeah, yeah. super sketch. Very sketchy. High, very, very sketchy. They say canyoners are sketchy. Highliners are probably worse. Yeah, it was a big wall thing, but yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So it's something to be aware of. It's like, I definitely want to do something to keep these strands from twisting because I don't have that little piece of metal in there. Okay. So sometimes for simplicity, I'll just grab the rope like that. Yep. And I keep those two strands separate as they go through. I could use a carabiner down here, redirected. 
Um, I've seen people do a trick. Uh, this device has a cool little slot right here. I can clip this, mm. but the risk is if, if twists start going through here, they're going into the device. And can, they can get jammed up here. Yep, and they'll get jammed up on top. Still stuck. So ideally you want to prevent twists from going into the device instead of dealing with twists afterwards. So that's one problem you can run into with this system. Okay. So even though it seems really simple to set up, it's like, oh yeah, just throw the end of the rope through the ring, toss it down, boom, go. I got to deal with any rope twists and they will get stuck. The other problem that it creates and why I'm not a super big fan of it is that this is a static system. I can't lower this. Once I'm on both of these, right. you cannot, if I got stuck. Yep, if you're stuck, I can't do anything. And I have literally given up all my rope into this. You can't do anything. I but, might have some in the bag. That's some VT magic. But <laughs> it's like, in order for you to repel down, for anybody to repel down a doubled system, this bag has already been, it's already down. All your other systems, you at least had your other half of your rope. I had something going on. So if I send you down, <laughs> on this system, both ends are down, and I don't have a spare rope, yeah. there's nothing I can do. I can't go down unless I have a VT. So this is, this entire video is about all the reasons you hate this. <laughs> um, but I still use it. You still I use still it. Use there's, it. A, there's always a place to use it, especially yep. if you're not dealing with water. Yep. Um, ascending, ascending these ropes can be challenging as well. Have mm. you ever ascended two strands like this? Well. You did show us a neat little trick in a VT video once. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. yeah. That's so cool I do know. Idea. I do know your trick. Yeah. Um, Spoiler alert. But if you don't have that, if you just have your ATC, you're manually. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. better hope it. It has a guide mode and, or locking, and then getting a press hook around both of these. It just makes self rescue. It makes rescue very difficult. Now we did talk before we turned the camera on about simul repelling. Yes. where you go down your side and I go down my side. And we hope we're way close to the same. <laughs> we, <laughs> the, there's a lot of risks with Simon climbing. One is if he gets to the end of the rope, especially if he doesn't have a knot in the end, which in canyon aquatic situations, they don't have knots in the end of the rope. In almost every other situation I can think of, you would want a knot in the end of your rope. And you should, yes. Um, but if he doesn't, and he goes off the end of the rope to either jump in the pool of water or just forgets, or he just doesn't have one and gets off the end, I, there's nothing stopping me from going. Going for the There's not enough life. friction up here for, I'd, I'd fall. Mm -hmm. um, now, one way to prevent that is clipping me to him with a sling, maybe like a double length sling. And this way we're always within like a body length of each other. Uh, personal anchor. This is, this is this is rated belt loop, right? My rated belt loop. And then this way he can't go past me, I can't go past him. We also have that in the How Not to Simul Climb video, which was very unhelpful except the ending where we talked about that. A benefit to Simul Repelling is if there's a lot of loose rock in a mountaineering situation where you can go down together and if your feet knock off loose rock, you don't have your partner below you. You're, you're pretty much side by side. So pros and cons to everything. There's no one right system for everything. It also depends on your ability and how fast you're trying to move. You oftentimes take new people through canyons. Mm -hmm. At least you were dumb enough to do that with me. <laughs> so you're gonna set up systems where you can lower somebody yep. if they're in a waterfall and or repelling a water. Or they're just slow. Or they're just slow. I mean, why'd you do that? I, I thought I did pretty oh, good with my selfie yeah. stick and yeah. repelling and at the same time. That's just how good I was. <laughs> So doing great, Ryan. Moving so, so one thing fast. you brought up, and and you you felt like it was complicated, but I don't think it was, is a doubled system where you can actually make this, where you can lower this, and this way you can move abrasion points. You can get them out of water, even though you don't like to use this in a water situation. Right. So this is where it gets it. So up until this point, we've always talked about a static system and a releasable. So doubled is the releasable version of this. So you can have, this is just double. This is the double no, system. No ED at the end. So the idea is putting Ryan on two strands as he repels, but I want to be able to release it, right? So it could look like a 
twin releasable system, but the person is just using both ropes at the same time. Um, the advantages that gives me is I get everything, all the advantages of a releasable system, but putting, putting your weight on two ropes and depending if, if they're separated from each other, I get some redundancy. But yeah. that's like, okay, if something, yeah. if something is sharp enough to cut one and then It'll be a you have a second one. <laughs> yeah. So it's not really redundant. So the idea is like, but I'm sharing my weight across two strands. Yeah. So it'll be harder to cut instead of all the force on one. It would. But if you wanted to move this while, you're while I'm going down it. Yep. So if these are the two ends that you're going to repel on. Mm -hmm. I need to put some friction in here somehow. And there's... Like I said, you could build a twin releasable system for this. But if you look, if you go back to the twin isolated systems, there was something that looked very simil similar to this, but it the friction was created because it was redirected. I don't have that here. So you got, I need, you got all this extra slack. Yep. Because you might want to use it to lower me. Right. So now I need to add more friction because that's not enough to hold somebody. So now, as you're rappelling on these two strands, you can lower it's a double me system. up to this point. Up to however much rope I have left okay. in the system. Once you hit that ring, that's it. That's it. You can't go any farther. So this is a rare occasion where I am so concerned about an abrasion point or something that I cannot deal with that I want to put you on two strands. And while you're rappelling, I'm going to let a little bit of rope at a time to move that abrasion point down. This is a way that I could do that. Okay, so if I'm worried about abrasion, one thing I could do is spread the abrasion out. I could, this is um, a no-no in climbing because you wear a groove out in the ring. But if I attach this to myself and I put this strand on repel, mm -hmm. as I go down, it's moving not only through that ring, but over the rock like this. Exactly. And there's no single point it's touching. Now, if there's a very sharp thing and you like do that, that's a different issue. Right. It's, the, it's this stuff back and forth while you repel right. that could kill you. So this is where you've just converted this into a doubled rope system. So the definition of a doubled rope system, easy way to look at it is while a person is moving on repel, the strands are moving in opposite directions, meaning one strand is going up and one strand is going down on a fixed point. That is a doubled With ED, a D. Yeah. ED system. Question, if this is what I imagine is the best way, because no point of your rope, this will fuzz up your rope, but like um, this is going to prevent any abrasion because you might be trying to like lower this to a new spot, but what if you did that and you have a stopper, a way to stop it, I can reset the whole thing and do it myself. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so there's if there's just two of us, I'm just imagining two of us. If you're trying to run eight people through a canyon, you come through an abrasion nightmare. Yeah. You're going to gets... use your compound, twin compound releasable systems where you got two ropes. Yep. They're both releasable. They're independent of each other. And then this is, this is just a way for the last person to, last person to get down. Um, so there are techniques that we'll call yo-yoing. <laughs> which just means if I go down, this end of the rope is going with me. Yeah. Right? So I go all the way down to the bottom, but then this end of the rope is getting closer. Yes. So if you want to do the same thing, all you need to do is tie a knot wherever this ends up being. Yeah. Figure eight, clove, uh, actually butterfly would be great. And now I just attach that because I've already made it down with the same system. Yeah. So that's what you connect, you put this in, and then you just send the rope back the other way. Ah, you, you, you don't, you're not resetting the no, rope. You're just, you're just starting over. Just, just like a yo-yo. What you got to be careful of, though, is that when I'm down, well, make you, sure you take your knot You got to be careful. <laughs> All right, so Canyon, in your world, in the water Canyon world, in the very little bit of the Canyon world I've seen, Knots at the end of your rope are a no-no because you're trying to get off of your rope. Yeah. It's, you'd rather fall than drown. It's a higher risk to drown than it is to fall. In, in highly aquatic canyons, yes. Yes, because you're more likely to, when you fall at the end of a rope, be in water. Yes. 
but you don't want to be in that water stuck on that rope keeping you under that waterfall. Right. This is why Petzl did a recall. <laughs> Ouch, I might include that. But in my world, in climbing or any anything, we like to have knots in the end. So there's there we are very conscientious of making sure there's no knot. But if you're not right. used to having knots, yep. that would suck. Yep. Because a knot like this is not going to get stuck enough for you to want to justify ascending that. Nope. Hopefully it wouldn't get stuck enough like this one, but this is an eight mil slippery rope. Yeah. If I throw a um, eight and a half or even nine on there, that definitely will not pull through that ring. So again, when you get into these weird systems, and this is why I almost, I would almost consider that this system that so many people use is a is a, oh, a little bit more advanced than what people think because of how complicated and how much you got to think about things when you start doing weird stuff like this. Okay, in a canyon context or in general, out of just all of them. Just in general, life. like just think about the like the rescue, like all of these things. You've really eliminated a lot of stuff with this system for the ease of it being fast and simple. Toss and go, they call it. It's just you know, you're not going to be rescuing very easy. No, and you're not going to be rescued very easy. You, There's not you, a whole lot I can do about abrasion. Yeah, you have to funkify this. You had to doubled system instead of just your double system. Right. For abrasion. What else? Uh, ease of rigging? It's easy. Oh, it's extremely easy. It's, it's rescues are just awful at that point. Yep. That's yep. the biggest and issue. That, and, that's, and that's the biggest key. It's like if I'm looking at, if, if there's no reason that I expect there to be a rescue, then it's not a big deal. And this is why I think climbers can use this all the time. They don't even think about these things because there's usually not a whole lot of stuff between where they're at and the next place they're going. Yeah. If um, I need rescuing on a rappel, it's because I fell off the end of my ropes. And you can basically, right. <laughs> you're not in a hurry at that point. Right. Um, and you got time, like your t-shirt or whatever, getting caught up in your rappel device. If you're hanging there, I got time to fix that versus uh, a cannon that has water coming down on top of you. I'm not going to be you water. Know, you know, you bring up a good point. Long. Rappelling in caves is where I first heard about people's hair getting stuck in uh, rappel devices. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that can happen in climbing. It can happen in the caving and or even a shirt. Yep. Hair sounds worse. Oh, it's and, definitely worse. and you're stuck. Imagine a beard. Yeah. Yeah. It and so it would, it would be nice to think about the rescue because if, if we were climbing and I got something stuck, um, oh, this spot right here, this skin oh. in a high line wheel hangover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess every sport <laughs> has something. Yeah, you're going to have a hard time getting down to them. They would have to know how to go back up. At least at least safely un unweight their rappel device. Yeah. So think about that. If they're free hanging, like, a, lot of, a lot of cavers rig their ropes to not touch any rocks because it's very sharp. It's not mm -hmm. weathered rocks. So, so yeah, they're free hanging all the time. If you get something stuck, you literally have to be able to like put in a cinder on that thing. Yep. And if it's like this, you would have to have somebody lock off one side with some magic ascenders or this so you can do something <laughs> instead of adding because you don't have a VT because you didn't watch our VT Prusik video. Yeah, and you think about it, in that moment, if it is your hair or a piece of skin, you're not in a really good state of mind to like collectively no? think through this process. I like, oh yeah, I, I wouldn't think so. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I said it, it is, it is gets nice. complicated very quickly in those situations, it's which nice. are not impossible. I think it's important to think through what could happen have a solution for it, even if it's a, even if it sucks. It's nice to practice this stuff at home before you go out and need it in real life. These courses are not meant to be everything you need to know. This is not your only course. We have all the other courses that you can go through from other people in our blog. So in the description, please go to the blog if you're watching these videos. It literally has the paper that he put together to help organize this, which is the birth of why we even came up with doing this course at. So we went over doubled systems. Yeah. So we went over Double rope, um, kind of demonstrated a double releasable. It's kind of a weird thing. And we, yeah. talked, we talked about the doubled. I mean, I secure this and I'm kind of like just lowering myself down. What we did not get into was a doubled releasable. Hold on. What do you call this? All right, lower me. I'm super incompetent. <laughs> 
Because uh, that, that falls into the was... same category of me doing my own, where yep. this is fixed to me and I and I lower myself. Yeah, so I would just call that a, because. That's a lower. This is, yeah, it's just straight up lower. <laughs> You're just lowering but it's really somebody. Just a, it would be a, a single, single releasable. There's That's a single, single rope release. going down and I'm just releasing gotcha. it. Gotcha. Yep. Your single releasables you showed us in the other video had this stuff all happen in here so you can release it. My hand would be the eight. Right, there's friction in there. There's friction is up here, not on you. Right. Which gives you the freedom to move around and stuff. Yes, it's, I don't have to worry about escaping a belay, but yeah, do you want to talk about that for a second? Sure. Since you like to talk about forces. <laughs> okay, we'll say Ryan weighs 150 pounds. He's being nice. And in order to keep you from moving, yeah. I need to put 150 pounds on my end, right? Mm, that's generally how it goes. So if there's 150 pounds here and 150 in pounds here, in theory- Frictionless world. How much force is here? In theory, 300. In theory, 300. If... Now, while I mean, he shows us that we can only have 150 on this bolt, keep in mind, a good bolt can hold a lot more than that. It's assuming you're using a bolt. Yes, if you're using a twig. Small tree, whatnot. Yes. This is why like repelling or lowering off your device, it put, not only does it put you in the system where you're kind of stuck, it does add extra force on the anchor. And if you can do something else, you, I'm not in the system, I'm not putting extra force on the anchor. That's like kind of going in the right direction in my book. Okay, so this reduces the force on your anchor. blade of grass that you uh, anchored to. I'll use three. I prefer th three blades of grass is definitely strong. Gotcha, and they have to be green, not brown. Yeah, usually. That's what I go with. Does that make That's sense? That's actually a very good point. Because I'm thinking in the context of this beautiful stainless steel. Actually, these are not stainless steel bolts. No, those are plated. You don't need stainless steel bolts if you're inside. Otherwise, use stainless steel. Yeah, right. <laughs> Save a dollar. Um, so we were getting into a releasable doubled, doubled system. So, hold on. Let me see if I can figure this out. So I set this up. Is this where you need a separate rope? So this orange rope is what I'm going to repel. Since this rope's a little bit shorter, yep. we can MMO this. Think about if I if I made the decision that we need a doubled system, yeah. and I need while you're repelling, yeah. there's a strand of rope going in both directions. Okay. And now I want to build a system that I can release at the anchor that has kind of the same effect. I don't know. Yeah, what so, have you accomplished so with this? If there was an abrasion point here and then the carabiner goes past it, now I'm on a single rope. That doesn't seem to solve anything. No, it does not. But it sure looks fancy. We're gonna anchor this. We need, if we had a ring, put a ring in here, but we're gonna use a carabiner. I hear they open. Yeah. And now I'm going to put, I need to have some friction in this system to be able to lower it. I'm going to use a block. Okay, got your EMO. Now. Gotcha. Oh, go here. fancy. Oh, snap. Fancy. this to your harness. Ah, oh, well we're getting really fancy at this point. Okay. Right here, since I'm more equipped for this right now. You are more equipped. Okay, so you're going to, wow. Let's go ahead. Are you repelling on razor blades? <laughs> right, exactly. The situation that would have to exist <laughs> yeah, if to you... warrant all of this is a little ridiculous, but I think you're, you're, you can see that how the concepts are working. So this is your doubled. Doubled. And you have a doubled built into this. Yep. So if I undo your overhand and, yep. kill, and get the mule out of there, I can reduce a little friction since we're not in a... And I see how that's... So it's not 
fully lowering. Yeah, this one's fixed, but this one's moving. Two strands are weighted. But that's if it's right here. And I can also, in six feet, I can move it a couple, I can move this a couple inches huh. for every couple feet you move. Right. I can budget how right. much I'm lowering. So, so the ropes are constantly moving over the rub point. Yeah, like I said, this is really, really kind of ridiculous. Um, I, like the, I like the thought so. experiment though, because mm -hmm. it helps you understand what releasable means, all the options you can do with ropes, and this is the a rope lowering system. Yeah. Rope, canyon rope systems. You, but yeah. you only go down in a canyon, is that correct? If you're doing it right. <laughs> oh, that's a great way to end this. <laughs> Hopefully the rating system made sense that all of these systems can get complicated. There's a lot of comments where like, oh, I would never do that. Well, situations change. So the rating system helps you make decisions a little bit better of when you should use something over the other. What's the simplest system that I should start with and start learning? What are the systems that I can do the most with in my canyon or in the area that I'm operating in, whether it's the Southwest or the Pacific Northwest? What are the hazards and problems that I'm actually dealing with? Those are the things that you really gotta start thinking about instead of going, nope, that's too complicated. I'll never use that. To make sure we clarify context, we are in the Pacific Northwest. That's where you learned to canyon. Mm -hmm. And there's water up here. There are canyons. <laughs> there's a lot of water up here. There are canyons without water. That changes the game. There are canyons in other parts of the world that are naturally gonna have different cultures on how things are done. You're getting one viewpoint of how to approach this thing. What I'm trying to do in this channel is how not to, is like get all sorts of different viewpoints. If you have very strong opinion and are super nice about how this is done, maybe we can feature your thoughts in a very similar fashion. Make sure you check out the blog because we're gonna continue to add to this. This is a moving fluid thing we're trying to share. And once I post videos on YouTube, for example, I can't really alter them, but I can alter the blog. It's on our website, hownotto.com. And in there, we're going to add canyon rope brake tests, where basically Brent spent all day in the, in the Slack Snap lab and he pulled on stuff and how ropes broke and what was easy to untie. The stone knot was something he liked because it kept coming undone super easy, regardless of how strong we pulled it. So there's a lot to learn from just us randomly breaking stuff. And if we can pull a storyline out of that, we will. So make sure you sign up for our emails, sign up for that you want Canyon information. We have a lot of rabbits we chase. Tell us which ones you're interested in so we can send them to you so you're not depending on the algorithm. YouTube is not gonna send you everything that we put out. Now that we're at the end of the course, Here's a challenge I would like to put out to people that have watched this that maybe know some of these systems. Is there a way that they could possibly post or hashtag um, the a system that you built with the naming convention that we just went over? Like build me a twin isolated system that I didn't show here. If you wanna make a contribution to the blog, because we cannot add anything to these videos, we would need a whole thing to make a video to make it worth putting out a whole video but if you want to write up something and you want to take pictures of it and you want to make it just where i can just go boop give us the context who you are why you think that way and then we can add it to the blog we can do this hive mind collective consciousness thing where everybody can contribute to this resource we're not trying to dominate the space we're trying to make it more available through this channel which cross-pollinates all these sports i didn't even know canyoning was a thing until he hit me up. So I hope if you don't canyon, you learn something that you're inspired to go do canyons because they are cool, especially if you're not wearing a wetsuit. We should do the whole like thing to exit this video. That was so cheesy.